there. It's so good to be with you again today. I've actually missed every one of you. Thank you for tuning in to the Psychologist Tendi TV. This day, this evening, is actually evening or even night here where I am. And after, you know, talking about casino genes, foods that are bad for system, how they affect us for the past two weeks, I thought to spread some positivity. So I thought to talk about anti-casinogens. Those are substances that counteract the effect of carcinogens and actually prevent carcinogenesis. That's to say these substances prevent the development of cancer. So those are the kind of substances we're going to be talking about today. I'm actually going to be talking about some spices, everyday spices, very handy, readily available in the market, very cheap, that you can incorporate to your diet that have carcinogenic properties and also several other health benefits. Right, so, but before we get into this, I'd like to do a little introduction about cancers, carcinogens, and then anti-carcinogens. But believe you me, this is going to be really, really quick because I don't want to do a long video today. I just want us to get straight to business of the day and then we'll be done before you know it. Stay with me through this. And if you have not subscribed to The Psychologist NGTV yet, please do so. The more, the merrier. Please make yourself a part of this i think it's a beautiful thing actually sharing knowledge getting informed living better healthier and um, maximizing our potentials okay so please click on the subscribe button and after you do that click on the bell symbol there to activate notification so you can be notified each time a new video is uploaded yeah so uh before we get into anti-carcinogens what are cancers Okay, cancer refers to a group of diseases that involve cells that multiply or have the propensity to grow abnormally and then to invade other parts of the body. So abnormal cell division with the propensity to invade other parts of the body. Now this is different from benign tumors, tumors that grow but they do not spread to other parts of the body but cancer when you have cancer there are so many different types of cancer usually named according to the parts of the body they affect when you have cancer cells they start somewhere and then the cells get out of control begin to divide sporadically and then they invade or spread to other parts of the body and begin to cause damage which is usually difficult to contain now so what are carcinogens carcinogens refer to substances radionuclides or radiation that promotes carcinogenesis that lead to the development of cancers and there are several uh, carcinogens out there you know we have for instance tobacco so whether you're smoking tobacco directly whether you're, whether you're an active smoker or a passive smoker you're exposing yourself to carcinogens because tobacco is said to contain about 70 chemicals that are known to cause cancers we have asbestos we have a processed meat like we talked about last week we have alcohol, um, we have um, ultraviolet rays from the sun, ultraviolet rays from tanning birds, and even from uh, the machine we use to dry our nails. When you use an ultraviolet machine, rays machine to dry your nails in the beauty salon, the beauty parlor, those are carcinogen uh, carcinogenic. Yeah. So there are several types of carcinogen carcinogens uh, available. Uh, either in the food that we eat or the drinks that we take the substances that we use or the environment that we are exposed to you know there are carcinogens in the air there are carcinogens from the soil naturally occurring and being emitted there are carcinogens from exhaust pipes there are carcinogens from gas flaring you know so they are actually all around us and we cannot completely avoid con contact having contact with these carcinogens however anti-carcinogens like we say counteract the effect of carcinogens okay and then you know they can actually because when you're exposed to these carcinogens it does not mean you're immediately going to develop a cancer what it depends on several other factors like your the degree of exposure you know like your genes you know like your health style your lifestyle and all of those will contribute to whether you have a comorbidity whether you have other uh underlying diseases you know all of this will contribute to whether as being exposed to a carcinogen will lead to you having a cancer or not and then like we said when you take a lot of substances that counteract the effects of carcinogens 
your playing safer. It's going to help prevent the development of cancers. How do carcinogens work? They work in several ways, some of which are one, they give rise to free oxygen radicals in our body that uh, destroy the uh, antioxidants that are in our body and they lead to the destruction of the DNA and this causes cancer. Otherwise, some other carcinogens directly destroy the DNA. Other carcinogens lead to gene mutation that promotes you know, development of cancers. And then how do the anti-carcinogens work? The anti-carcinogens also work in this ways. One is they boost our natural immune, our immune system, because our body has an inbuilt capacity to actually fight off these cancer cells, you know, but for a lot of reasons, they may not be able to do so. But when we take anti-carcinogens, they boost, boost our immunity and make us capable of fighting off this cancer, cancer, you know, uh, ca uh, cancers and then the anti, uh, the carcinogens. Okay, yeah, so that's one way anti-carcinogens work. Another way is that they contain antioxidants that destroy these free oxygen uh, radicals, you know, free oxygen radicals in our body that cause cancer, you know. So that's another way that um, anti-carcinogens work. And the third way is that they directly deactivate carcinogens. Okay, so these are the three ways anti-carcinogens work. So quickly, quickly, I told you that was going to be quick. We are going to go down to spices that can that contain or that have anti-carcinogenic properties and that can help us prevent the development of cancers. Whilst I was preparing this, I really felt happy because most of these substances I'm going to talk about with you today, uh, they are readily available in my kitchen. You can hardly come to my house and not find these substances, you know. As a matter of fact, I need to give some credit to my father because he introduced me to the so some of the substances I'm going to talk about, when I mention them, I'll, I'll mention, you know, he said, get this for me, I, I learned they are healthy and I need to use them. And when I go, go, went to get them, I actually had to read about them and research about them and I found that they were, you know, wonderful. I started using them ever since, you know, so thanks to you, Daddy. And then I hope that after watching this video, you're also going to get hooked on all of those spices as I am hooked. I mean, it's for the better, it's for your health. Yeah, so let's get started. The very first one on our list today is turmeric. Yes, this is not the first time I'm mentioning turmeric in my videos. I mean, I've been talking about turmeric um, repeatedly, but today we're going to go into details. And with me here today, I have both the fresh turmeric. This is it. Fresh turmeric. You can decide to use fresh or dried turmeric. And I also have mm -hmm, dried turmeric in this jar right here. I'm going to pour out some of those so you can actually see how it looks. I'm sure we are, most of all know this. Yeah, so this is it. Dried turmeric. Always have this in my kitchen. Now... Yeah, so turmeric is actually a very good anti-inflammatory agent and also a good antioxidant. And this is because it has a very high content of curcumin, okay? That's why it has its properties. And um, turmeric has also um, it's been used for its value in uh, beauty parlors and all of that. It's good for the skin. Uh, and all of those properties so for many years has been used in creams and stop beauty products and all of that but now we've come to know that it's actually very very good for the health and it should be incorporated into our diets very easy to use too as a matter of fact i add turmeric to almost every food i cook as much, apart from the very local soups you know when i'm doing my sauces tomato sauce stew when I'm cooking rice, whether it's fried rice, whether it's uh, jollof rice, I add turmeric to my diet. When I'm cooking my uh, noodles, my pasta, I add turmeric to that. Almost everything I cook when I'm cooking beans, uh, when I'm making omelets, you know, and it's healthy. However, there's taking excessive turmeric. It's actually not good for us. There's a required amount of turmeric and research has shown that 
it will take between 500 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams of turmeric per day in the extract form, and that's okay for us and uh, we might produce health benefits. But well, taking above that per day may not be good for you. And taking turmeric in extract form has higher content of curcumin than when we add it to our diet. So to be on the safe side, let's just add to our diets. When you add about 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams of turmeric to your diet, it only gives you about 60 to 100 milligrams of curcumin. So that's the safe amount for everyone. Why am I making this point? This is because certain people are not supposed to take turmeric in spite of its um, effectiveness. Uh, it has been said to be very quite effective in fighting off cancers, you know, and preventing cancers. It's uh, a proven anti-inflammatory and antioxidant agent. In spite of these benefits, uh, certain people shouldn't take. So pregnant women, first of all, should not take uh, turmeric. If you refer back to my video on weight loss, postpartum weight loss, uh, weight loss I had mentioned that turmeric has the ability to cause contractions in the uterus. And if you're pregnant and these contractions um, happen, it may not be safe for the pregnancy. It might possibly lead to a miscarriage or something. So pregnant women are not supposed to take turmeric. That's the first set. Um, some people have said breastfeeding mothers shouldn't take, but I read that turmeric increases uh, lactation and it also contracts the uterus. And I think when you take the safe amounts, there's no harm. Yeah, so you just ensure you're taking safe amounts of turmeric. And then the second group of people that should not take turmeric are those people who are anemic they should not take turmeric. Also, people who have bleeding disorders should not take turmeric. Yeah, for I don't want to go into too many details today. And then also, for those people who are diabetic, turmeric has um, the propensity to lower sugar levels, you know, and when you're diabetic, you have to control your sugar level to ensure it's not too high or too low. Yeah, so you should ensure that you do not take too much turmeric so your sugar level does not drop below the required level. Turmeric. Also, if you have kidney stones, you should not take turmeric, but remember, Taking safe amounts of turmeric is poses no harm to anyone at all. It's only when you take excessive amounts of turmeric that there are some dangers. That's one thing that everyone should have in their kitchen and please add to your diet. When we add to our food, remember the low level of curcumin is low and then it's safe for us. So that's the first spice that we will be talking about today. Now number two on our list is thyme. Yeah, the good old thyme. You know, I remember sitting down in one of my classes, I think third or final year of college, and one of my medicinal botany classes, for those of you who do not know, my first degree is in biology, I have a BSc in biology education, and at that time we did a lot of courses in physiology, anatomy, uh, we did some, a course in medical biology, uh, medical microbiology, a lot of these courses, and I think that's what I developed my interest for the medical sciences, for biology and all of these things I love to talk about. Yeah, so I remember sitting on there thinking how useful time is, you know, and we just use it without really knowing the benefits. So time is another very useful spice. It's an antioxidant, has anti-inflammatory properties, has antimicrobial properties, you know, it's an antifungal, uh, antibacterial agent, you know, it can treat time oil is also extracted and used. It can treat uh, at less food. There's so many uses of time, I can't even go into the details. I think you should go and do your own research on this one. But time is really healthy for you, and it's one spice that you should always have in your kitchen. Okay, uh, I should show you. I'm sorry, we're all familiar with time, have it in the kitchen, but I didn't bring that out because uh, I thought everybody knows what time is. So please add a spice to your food. You can also do an infusion. As a matter of fact, this was taught to me in a medical botany class, yeah. Uh, medicinal botany class, yeah. So you can actually put it in boiled water, or boiled water and add some thyme to it and then allow it for some time and then drink. That's also healthy. But the easiest way to add to your meals is a good spice, and adds nice flavor to your food and it's an anti-carcinogen and then it has all of this several 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 benefits okay that's the number two on a list number three is actually sage leaves i don't have those here today but i remember uh, i've used them once when my daddy came around 
And uh, this friend of my mom's I'm always talking about, she's a herbalist, you know, she deals with herbs and herbal medicine. And my dad has sent me to collect sage leaves, which I collected, uh, put up the picture in the screen for you to see. And you can take this as tea, either um, fresh or dried. You can take it as tea, either we just boil water and then when the water starts boiling, you put some sage leaf in and then after a few minutes, you drain and you drink. And sage is said to have powerful anti carcinogenic properties as well. Experts have also said that sage leaves improves memory it increases attention span and it improves your mood and in fact in aromatherapy it has been used for several years uh, for aromatherapy so yeah please get sage leaves use them it can be used for baking uh, you can add it to your meals as well and it is an anti carcinogen that's number three on our list we're making progress please stay with us and watch this to the end and number four on our list today is cinnamon if you guessed you might have guessed right this is the cinnamon i use yes i'm just going to pour some of this into a plate here for you to see i know we are all familiar with how this looks but today we are looking at it you know live and this is how it looks and this one even as i'm holding it the flavor oh i love it in my tea my chocolate tea what I do is actually to add some cinnamon, just a little less than a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon to my tea and then I add my chocolate and milk and I drink and I love the flavor. You could also do it cinnamon and some other herbs in your tea and drink. And cinnamon is perfect for confectionaries whilst baking. When I make pancakes, when I'm making chin chin, when you're baking cakes, uh, baking, whatever kind of baking, cinnamon gives a very nice flavor to your uh, baked food so please why not and then we go on to the benefits of cinnamon they are really numerous cinnamon is said to contain iron it contains manganese contains vitamin k you know and many other vitamins and it's an anti-inflammatory agent it's an antioxidant an antimicrobial agent is said to be very useful for regulating blood sugars and blood pressure what more could you ask for it's affordable so please just make sure you have cinnamon handy in your kitchen and add it to your diet good for everyone in the family yeah so please have your cinnamon handy use it a lot especially in your cooking everything needs moderation do not use it excess but it's highly recommended now if you want to live healthy and happy then you need this in your kitchen definitely yeah so that's number four and number five this one will wow you okay wait hold on for this one now uh spice number five this one will wow you it will surprise every person because i mean our uh, spice number five is this cayenne this red peppers right here some people call chili peppers. I don't know if this is the chili pepper, but this is cayenne. And in the local parlance, it's called shongbo. If you're not Nigerian, you definitely don't know this one. Yeah, but this spice you see here, it's actually very accessible. It's cheap enough. In fact, there's hardly a time I go to the market that I don't get to buy this. You know, and then the use too is, you can use it for a lot of things, for your stew, very nice, for what we call moimo in Nigeria, bean pudding, very nice for that and in a whole lot of uh, meals that you cook you can add cayenne to eat now what are the benefits of cayenne there are so many too many to even mention so cayenne contains contains vitamin a contains vitamin b6 contains vitamin c contains vitamin e contains vitamin k contains manganese and also potassium can you even beat this one and also it contains capsaicin that's actually the active agent that is said to help it fight off cancer cells and is particularly effective in preventing um, uh, lung cancer that's caused by smoking, liver cancer and also prostate cancer and capsaicin is also said to be a weight loss agent so it can also help you control your weight you know it can uh, keep down migraines 
and so many other benefits. You can see that this wasn't so difficult after all. They are not strange uh, foods to us or strange spices. They are regular everyday spices. We just need to consume more of them and be more conscious, you know, about their health benefits. So you always have them handy for use. They are really beneficial for our health. And that was spice number five. And I think I should do two more, even though I'm trying to beat time here today. But the next one we're going to be talking about, maybe the final one, because we can't exhaust this in this video. We're going to do this in series. Somewhere in the future, we're going to talk more about carcinogens and then we'll talk about anti-carcinogens to balance it up. So today, the final one on my list. Well, not the final one on my list, but the final one I want to talk about today is actually parsley leaves. Okay, and these things are actually readily available in the market, although sometimes you may not be lucky enough to get real fresh ones. So this is parsley leaves. I actually got this from the market today. This one I've not been using a lot of, but after my reading, I can bet you I'm going to start using a lot of this. You can make tea out of parsley leaves. Just boil water and turn into your parsley leaves in the cup and drain after about four minutes and drink. And there you go. Or you can use the dried leaves as well, or you can buy already a packet or packaged um, uh, parsley leaves and use for your tea. It's also added in meals and considered very good uh, additive to our meals. Now, so what does parsley leaves do for you? First and foremost, every spice we've mentioned here today have anti carcinogenic properties and parsley leaves are no different okay but they also have other benefits parsley leaves contains very high quantities of beta carotene contains vitamin c quercetin luteolin and epigenin okay and it has high anti-inflammatory and anti uh oxidant properties so it's also effective for preventing cancers now i have to stop here today i have a long list actually a very long one and i'm definitely going to continue this sometime in the future maybe next week or uh, maybe uh, some way in the future please uh if you haven't subscribed to the psychologist ng tv yet you are actually missing a lot because a lot of videos will uh, escape your notice so please click on the subscribe button Right this minute, please, and then click on the bell sign for notifications so you can be notified each time we have a new video uploaded. I love you. I love sharing all this information with you. You know, I've been a lot of reading and I've been changing my lifestyle because I don't want you to leave me behind. So I hope you're doing the same. I hope you're applying all of this knowledge. I hope your kitchen is changing. I hope the way you cook your food is changing. There's much, much more coming on for to you from here. Trust me. And one of my viewers has said, oh, I want to hear more psychological topics. And I'm like, oh, don't you know that biology and psychology are like uh, twin brothers or something? You can't, they work hand in hand. And so, yes, we're going to do a lot of psychology in the future, but this is life and life is really important. So thank you for sticking with me through this today. Please tune in again next week for another exciting and informative time. Uh, subscribe to the Psychologist NG TV. Connect with me on Instagram at the Psychologist NG, on Facebook at the Psychologist NG, and on uh, Twitter at the Psychologist NG. And thank you so much. Love you. Have a productive week ahead next week, and then uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And see you. Ciao.